I am Princess Leia of Alderaan. We've placed a rebel spy vital to the survival of the rebellion into your star speeder. You must see him safely delivered to the coordinates I'm transmitting to your R2 unit. This is our most desperate hour. Help me start to us. You're my only hope. This is Princess Leia Organa. I look forward to a lieutenant. End transmission. Well, there's no turning back now. I know who you are. You're Ezra Bridger. I heard your transmission. Yeah, my parents heard it too. But they're gone now. I'm sorry. It's just... There's so much against us. Do you ever wonder... If this fight is even worth it? Every day. But I'm still here. But you're a princess. You don't have to risk your life doing this. I feel like because I can fight, I have to. For those who cannot. And I think you might be the same way. Those defenses are formidable. Why? Because the Empire doesn't underestimate you. They know how good you are. We might be able to get one out, but we'll never get all three. I know you need those ships. So don't tell me why we can't get them. Tell me how we will. Well, Kanan and I still have our disguises, so we can get onto the platform. But to get close to the ships, we'll need a distraction. I can handle that. Star Wars The Force Awakens on Disney Infinity 3.0. Hello, Han. I see you're in the thick of it. <laughs> Just like old times. Leia? How did you... They have their spies, and we have ours. Right, 3PO? We've received the information from BB-8. If we can decipher it, there may still be hope to find Luke. And what about the lights we saw above Takodana? The First Order's new weapon. Built within the core of a planet. They call it the Star Killer. We are still determining how it is powered. It's powered by the energy drained from a system sun. And you would be... His name's Finn, and he's the guy that rescued me. So what we saw was a weapon firing? I'm afraid so. What did it hit? The Hosnian system. The seat of the galactic government is gone. Obliterated. What's more, our actions have revealed our command center here. We believe we are the next target. Our plan is to send a small team to infiltrate the base and destroy the weapon before more lives are lost. Maya Organa, Emperor Palpatine, is dead. He and a second Death Star battle station were destroyed by Alliance forces earlier today. This does not mark the end of the Empire. Claim your freedom and your future. Don't worry, Luke. Those two A-Wings will protect us. That one A-Wing. Okay, so it's just us. Push it full throttle. I'll get rid of anyone dumb enough to fall. That doesn't sound good. It's not. We need repairs fast. And there's only one place within range. Uh, uh, His family doesn't need trouble with the Rebellion, and we really don't need trouble with the Empire. Uh, wait. If you hide us from the Empire, I'll pay you five times the cost of our repairs. Five times? Let me crunch some numbers. That's like... Like five times as much! Help us, Freemaker Salvage and Repair. You're our only hope. Ooh, you are really good at that. Did you take the scenic route? Sorry, sorry. We had no choice. <laughs> It's not the first time I've escaped through a garbage chute, but hopefully it's the last. She told me strange stories, like how she and her mother had escaped from some sort of facility, and how she wasn't sad because her mother had just returned to their planet. Their planet, huh? Yeah, that sounds about right. I didn't understand any of it at the time. When I asked if she meant one in the sky, she said no. This one, right here. I mean, 
What can you say to that? What is up, everybody? Welcome back. Oh, I'm back. I'm back. But I bring special guests. I bring guests. Uh, we have a very special guest tonight on the Scavoli Tunnel Tonight Show. The voice. The voice of our beloved princess, Princess Leia Organa, Julie Dolan, everybody. Greetings, Rebels. <laughs> Julie, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, and you're doing well? I am, I'm so excited. Like, today I woke up, I was like, I'm interviewing Princess Leia. <laughs> like, I'm not, it's not Carrie Fisher, but it's the next best thing. So I was like, I woke up and I was like, I can't believe I'm actually interviewing the voice of Princess, the Princess Leia from Star Wars Rebels, because I love Rebels. Rebels is one of my favorite animated series. Oh. And I love animation. Live action, I don't really like that much. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a big animation kind of guy. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, when I heard your voice, and I was like, when I watched Rebels, I was like, is that Carrie Fisher? I said, but in that time, I don't know if Rebels, I don't know if she passed before Rebels or maybe after Rebels. I forgot what year she passed in. Uh, she passed in 2016 and, and Rebels aired January of 2016. So she passed in December. December. Okay. Because at that time, I didn't, I watched every live, like the movies and everything, the Star Wars, but I didn't watch any animation stuff. So that coming into Rebels, I didn't know. Like, I knew Carrie Fisher passed, but I didn't know, like, you know, sometimes they do the voice and then they put, like, like what Darth, they're doing with Darth Vader. Yeah. Like, James Ar uh, Earl Jones, they're yeah. doing the voice of him. Yeah. They're keeping it. So yeah. I thought that's what they might have did for you. And then I was like, let me go check it out. Let me see in the credits. And they said you. And I was like, yeah. wow. I said, that's what you did with Princess Leia Organa in Rebels. And then we'll talk about the games that you did them in. And I was, like, blown away. Really. Oh, thank you away you know they um, did they did take her voice in um oh what movie was it was it rogue one the very last scene it's the cgi carrie and oh, okay. she, and she says the word hope and that's all she said and i called them up and said hey why didn't you call me to do that and they said well we actually picked carrie's dialogue from a new hope and we Aww. put it in this one. So they used her voice. Oh, that's good. That's cool. I like what I like sometimes because sometimes you don't know if you're gonna hit it right on the money too. Because, but technology these days are yes. just like yeah. so amazing. Like we could be doing this right now and then 20 years or 80 years down the line, people use our voices over something. Like it's so weird. It yeah. Is. Oh, that's happening now. That's the whole AI thing. Where... Yes. Yeah, we have voice actors have to be very careful right now because you don't know what they're going to use your voice for. It Maybe is. I heard a lot of people. I heard a lot of people got like, "That's not me. I didn't voice that character. That's not me." Yeah, there's nothing like that. That um, was the whole reason for the SAG strike is because we needed some protection for this uh, whole AI thing. Yeah. Now do you have that. You have that protection. Under you? We do. We we have it, it. It's in the contract, but there's so many variables in the contract. It's you have to be every job. You have to kind of read through it and make sure that they're not going to take your voice and use it for the future, unless there's payment for that. So it's just uh, with technology now, it, things are changing rapidly, it and is. it's hard to keep up with it. It is, and we're get and we're get, not getting younger either, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> we're not getting younger. Um, no. But Julie, my first question to you is, what's it like being Princess Leia Organa? Like, what is like, like, how did you get, how did this come about? How did the role come about? Did you know anything? Cause I know Star Wars is very secretive about their projects. So how did you come about this role of Princess Leia Organa? Okay. Well, let's flash back to 2010. And my agent called me and said, hey, can you sound like Princess Leia from A New Hope? And I said, mm, nope, I don't think so. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I had seen 1970, in 1977, I saw A New Hope. I saw the, the trilogy. I saw all three of them. But I had not seen anything else until, and this was 2010, until back then. So I thought, well, let me listen to her voice. And they sent me... Um, the Obi-Wan Kenobi speech, the uh -huh. General Kenobi. Years ago, you, they sent me that in a, in a, uh, a clip and they sent me the, um, 
the script for it and they wanted me to record it. So, and I didn't know what this was for. They don't tell you what it's for. No, it's very secretive. Mm -hmm. So I, how I work as a voice match when I'm trying to match a voice. I did this for Barbara Streisand. I did voice match for Barbara Streisand and I don't sound like Barbara Streisand, um, <laughs> but they thought I did. And how I do it is I will play the recording of the actor and I will say the words along with them, trying, okay. trying to match um, the rhythm, the pitch, the gait, the emotion, uh, trying to match everything. So it sounds like one person talking. And then when I feel like I got it, I'll take away that voice and then I'll say the line. So it, it helps me to do that immediately before I have to record. So I did that for the audition. I went over it and over it and over it until my husband helped me. He would say, lower your voice right here. Okay, there's a little slight ac English accent. Try to get that in there. Um, slower here. So he helped me with it. And I sent my audition into my agent. She forwarded it over to Disney and didn't hear anything for like two or three weeks. And then I get a call that I got a call back. I said, oh, great. What is this for? My agent said, I don't know. Um, so I went into Disney Imagineering Studios in Burbank, uh, California, and it's where they do a lot of live action, a lot of theme park, a lot of uh, projects there. So I went into this beautiful recording studio and they hired a voice coach, uh, Eliza Jane Schneider, and she's like the accent queen. She can do every <laughs> accent. She's done so much research. So they brought her in to teach me and two other girls that sort of slight English accent that Carrie had in A New Hope. I don't know if you noticed that. She, I didn't notice that, actually. Yeah, C Carrie had just come back from London. I think she was studying acting there. And she and immediately went into filming A New Hope and had this kind of affected English accent only in scenes where she is, is being very serious. And she even wrote this in her book. She said, regular, uh, all the other scenes I talk normal, but for some reason when I'm talking to, you know, generals and this and that, and, and I, this accent came out. It was, it, so I had to match that. And so I went into the studio, they had the hologram from A New Hope where she's saying the Obi-Wan Kenobi speech. They changed the dialogue for me. It was star speeders and this and that. And I'm like, what is this for? <laughs> so they had the hologram in front of me just so I could, you know, connect with my character and, and look at her. And uh, so I recorded it. I stepped out of the studio and they played the hologram. And what they did was they manipulated the mouth on the hologram to say what I was saying. And I, watched it and I said, is that me, my voice, or is that Carrie? They said, no, that's you. And oh, that's wow. when I realized, okay, I do sound like her. <laughs> and still didn't know what this was for. <clears throat> so two weeks later, three weeks later, I didn't hear anything. And then my agent called and said, you booked it. Great, what is it? She said, it's Star Tours ride at Disneyland. They're redoing the ride. And you get holograms that will come up during the ride, talking to the people in the ride. And you could get Darth Vader, you could get Luke, you could get Obi-Wan Kenobi, you could get Princess Leia. There's like 500 different variations. So if you get Princess Leia, that's my voice. I think I sent you that video. Yes, you did. I have it. And I didn't know if that was you, I didn't know if that was you. I actually didn't know it was you, actually. I was like, oh, she sent me this one. I was like, I like yeah, that. That was my first Leia job. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And so then, the then, rest is history. <laughs> and the rest is history. Six years later, I mean, I didn't hear anything from, or five years later. Um, that was it. And then I get a call from Dave Filoni, who, oh, wow. um, he went to Disneyland and he saw that and said, who is that girl? We need to find her. <laughs> so, because they were preparing for Rebels. Now, I found out that um, for a, a Star Tours ride, they auditioned 200 girls, could not find out what they wanted. They went to Carrie and had her audition, but her voice ha had, you know, taken a deeper tone and um, a little more gravelly. And she didn't sound like herself at 18. 
So they saw 200 more girls and I was in that group that was narrowed down to three. And so um, that's how that happened. So then Dave saw that and brought me in and said, we're doing some kind of an in-house project for Disney and we need you to wear a helmet. They put dots all over my face. It was a, a, a performance capture. And normally as, as a voice actor, you don't have to memorize your lines because they're on a music stand right in front of you. Okay. So this time there's a camera right here in my face. And he said, you're going to be doing a scene with uh, R2-D2 and C-3PO. Not really, but I have to imagine them. And then I thought, oh, so I can't really look at the lines then. He said, no, 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 you need to memorize them now. <laughs> oh, okay. So that was just a quick little scene. I think it was an audition. I wanted this, I think he wanted to see if I could act like with characters. So I did this and I've been an actress since I was a kid. So I've taken every acting class you could possibly imagine. So he, I was well seasoned as an actor. So I did the scene and uh, I imagined, you know, the characters there. And uh, he said, okay, great. Uh, so when you come in for Rebels and I thought, what? Did you, did I just book Rebels? He said, <laughs> yeah, you're going to be my Princess Leia for Rebels. Oh. So um, <clears throat> that changed my life in, in the sense that when I got to go in and record, it was with the whole cast. Usually you would go in and record by yourself, but this was like a play. Everybody was in the room. Everybody had their music stands. There were, there was a camera on me and I couldn't figure out why there was a camera on me. And later I found out it's because the artist was going to draw my movements and how I said things. So they based, the character drawing on me, which was oh, wow. Um, but we were all in the room together and we read it through like a play and that's how we recorded it. So it was very real. We were very connected. Um, we even, you know, would, even though you're looking at your lines, we would still look at each other and, and have a connection with each other. So it, it, it made it that much better. Yeah. And then when that, aired even before it aired i started getting calls to do interviews and conventions i had never done a convention i didn't know what cosplay was i didn't know but i'll tell you i did research when i got the part just like an, when you get a part as an actor you do research on your character i watched all six movies there were only six movies at the time force awaken hadn't come out yet i watched all six movies over and over and over. And I read everything I could possibly read on Princess Leia, Wikipedia, Wikipedia, everything, <laughs> because I wanted to find out who she was and what she believed in and who her parents were and where she came from and how she felt about things and what her personality was like. So I could step into that role and be true to it. So I did a lot of research and watching those movies, especially the early ones, um, yes. where I could Four, see- five and six. Yeah, to see Padme and Anakin and see who her parents were and what happened to them. Yeah. It really opened up a, a lot of information for me as the character. Uh, and especially doing inter interviews. I had to know my history. And the first <laughs> couple of interviews, I remember um, uh, the publicity department of Disney and Lucas, they'd be on the phone. I'd be doing a phone interview and they say, we're just going to be quiet in the corner, but we'll be there for you if you get tripped up and they ask you something you don't know or that you're not allowed to say, we're going to step in. So, uh, it, it, and then after a while, they said, you know what? You got this. You don't need us anymore. You know what you're talking about. And then going to the conventions, meeting all the fans, man, that was a trip. But you have to know what's, they always, they want to talk about Rebel. They want to talk about every episode. They do episode i was in one episode so i mean i watched some of the episodes but i didn't watch the whole series and i hadn't seen clone wars at that time so people were asking me questions about the clone wars and i was like i don't know oh my god and i got more research to do <laughs> i gotta go home now and watch tv <laughs> yeah i did yeah and then i ended up getting um star wars uprising the video game and the force awakens uh um Disney, it was Disney, um, uh, Disney 3.0 and they 
I didn't know this, but I get to the studio and they said, oh, by the way, you're doing general Leia. Huh? Well, what does she sound like? And they said, well, listen to Carrie's um, like current interviews. So I sat in my car before I went into the studio and I watched an interview with her. And I'm sitting in my car trying to, trying to lower my voice and get that gravel and so I can sound like, and I did that for Force Awakens video game. And you know, I don't, I don't think it sounds like her, but they bought it and they said, okay, it's fine. And then I did um, the animation Legos, uh, the Freemakers. Oh, yes, I remember that, yes. Do you do so, the recent one, the Rise of, the Rise of Skywalker one? No, this was uh, the Freemaker Adventures. Oh, it was on okay. Disney uh, Disney XD, and uh, it was kind of an offshoot spinoff uh, with with Legos characters, and it was a comedy. So we got to play around with a lot of funny stuff. But but there's a lot of Legos projects. There is. There's so many I can't even count on my fingers. Yeah, yeah, me either. Even the games. So did you ever do like um, for Battlefront or anything? Or no, you just no. Misty Lee did. I think Misty Lee did Battlefront. Now there's five Leias that all did Leia voices that we are all friends and we do conventions oh. together. And um, Shelby Young, who did uh, uh, Forces of Destiny and a couple other things. Yes. Um, Kat Tabor, who was Padme, she did one project as Leia that still hasn't been released yet. Oh, and, wow. And Misty Lee, who did Battlefront. <clears throat> and Anna Graves, who did uh, Disney 3.0 the earlier version i did uh the forces force awakens she did the younger leia, younger leia. So the five of us have been friends for almost 10 years now oh that's awesome i love uh cat Tabor and anna grace even uh shelby young too yeah she's she's amazing she does yeah. so many characters in yeah Star we're all very close oh, you gotta get them on the show now julie you gotta hit them <laughs> up for me girl hit them up for me yeah um but that's amazing. I was just listening to you, and it's, you're so passionate about playing the character <laughs> of Princess Leia. And mm -hmm. you really, a lot of people, like, I know a lot of people don't do their research on the character. They just take the role and be like, okay, we're going to embody it ourselves. Because I know what animation is different than live action, but still. Yeah. Like, and that's why I love animation so much, because you could see how, like, you're in a room like the Clone Wars, like, they film the Clone Wars all together, you know, they're like a family. Live action's really not much like that. You know what I mean? Oh, we'll see you like in a year from now or we'll do interviews together, but they're really not mm -hmm. bonded together, you know, as of animated, like a family, I can say. Yeah. Um, and that's what I saw. Now, how was it like working with like Dave Filoni? Like that, he's like, oh, go. I was intimidated, <laughs> <clears throat> you know, and I'm working with the whole cast from, uh, from uh, Star Wars Rebels. And they had been together for a long time, but they welcomed, they were so excited about this episode. They Aww. told me, um, <clears throat> we, we could not wait for this episode. They didn't get the script till like that week. And they're like, oh my God, Princess Leia is going to be on our show. Who is it? <laughs> uh, so yeah, we, we, we bonded, but again, it, I, it was only one day. I only worked one day, but some of us have done conventions together since then. So oh, okay. We, yeah now how's it like at the conventions is it like when you step into that is it like have you got like i know there's a lot of obsessive fans and stuff like that how how is the convention scene well for you? the ones that i've done there's been a parade in my honor i was given uh, a plaque for um the uh, an honorary member of uh, uh first yeah and i didn't know what that meant you know when i've got darth vader and this whole parade of stormtroopers and they come <laughs> and they they I, it made me, I, I'll tell you, I thought, okay, I'm going to ride the wave on this because I don't know what's happening, but this is something special. This, this family of, of fans, they are dedicated and they're loyal and they make you feel so special. And I thought, I don't know if this is ever going to happen to me again. This is just, I felt like I was dreaming, you know, <laughs> it was just crazy. Um, and is. the conventions are are great. I mean, you, you know, you meet other actors as well, but God, the fans, you meet the fans and sometimes you meet, re-meet them and you get to travel. I've been to London and, and all over uh, doing different conventions. 
you know. Yeah, and it's. I, I hope to meet you at a convention one day. I hope you come yeah. to Rhode Island or something like that. I don't know. If we'll see. You, know, you have to be asked, at least for in my experience, they have to want to um, bring you in. And Correct. the the older that this gets, you know, the further away it's Rebels gets, they're they're bringing in people. Like I'm doing this convention, the Rebel Scum convention. I'm doing a photo op with Vivian Blair, who played Leia. In Obi Wan Kenobi. I know. I was just going to ask you, how do you love that? Oh my! I didn't even know about it until I went to the website and saw. Oh. Uh, you know, I saw my my little picture and what times I'm supposed to be doing photo ops, and then it said two the two Leias or the two princesses, and I thought, what's who's that? And it said Blair and Dolan, and I thought, are you kidding? So they're bringing in people from current stuff, and there's so much current stuff. You know, so my conventions have slowed down a bit, which is fine. I mean, I'm busy here in Atlanta, so. But when I get a chance to do them, if it's something I want to do, I, I'll do it. But they they want more current, like Star Wars uh, uh, celebration. I've never been, and I thought I would get to go. I'd get asked, but they only have so much room at the tables, and they want to bring in the live action people. They want to bring in you know that big that the main actors. And so I totally understand that. I would too if I were them. Yeah, but I also like, um, like I'm animation, so I'm biased. I'm always biased. <laughs> um, but I would love to see like, like you know, like the live action. They get the most like hype and everything. And the animation, like, it's like, ah, eh. like you know what I mean? Like they hype it up. Oh my mm -hmm. god! Like the the acolytes out, Ahsoka, the show Obi Wan. But and when you release an animation. Everybody loves it, don't get me wrong, everybody loves it, but there's no merch, there's no nothing about it. And I'm like, and that's why like I create these shirts, like the animation shirts. And I there's do a lot, there's a lot of merch. What are you talking about? Where's here's my merch? There's merch. Yes, yeah, so, oh I know that that came out years ago. I have that. That came out years ago. <laughs> uh, I have that one. Um and I need you to sign it for me, Julie. I will. Um, I will. Um but and yeah, then like, yeah. So I get go Go ahead. No, go, go ahead. Uh, um, but like, yeah, that Mert, like that, that came out, I don't know, probably 2016. Like they make those toys, but now they make like, if you ever see like, if they go, okay, we're releasing an Ahsoka figure from Clone Wars animation, but it, you can look at it. It doesn't look like her. Oh. It looks um. like the live action version. Like you could see like it's, it's mature. You know what I mean? It's not like kiddish, if I could say that. Yeah. Like I like I love my Ahsoka. I love Ahsoka. Ahsoka is my favorite character. Um, but like I, even with like the Bad Batch, like there wasn't much merch with the Bad Batch that just came out. Um and stuff like that. Like I wanted them to like really push animation more than live action, but I understand like live action, you know, the biggest actors, like you said, correct. But also give like I give you that's why I love having people like you on the show. Like I, I want to give you credit. Like this is your time, you know. I know mm -hmm. you don't I know a lot of people that are in animation don't get that like spotlight, you know, only like the big ones, you know, like the voice of Ahsoka, voice of Anakin, voice of Obi-Wan, voice of the clones, like Rex. Yeah. And but like you, Shelby, uh, Kate, uh, Catherine Tabor, Anna Graves, like, look at how, look at those characters. People love those characters. Yeah. And I love what you did. Like, I, I, I would keep saying it. Like, I love what you did with Princess Leia, even just for one episode. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like you killed whatever time you took in the studio, you did that. And look at what you just said to me. You did the research. It, I know a lot of yeah, actors. And it just, that one day changed my life of all the things that I, all the opportunities that I had. Go, go ahead. You you were saying. Uh, yeah, like a lot of these actors, like I know some of the live action actors that are in Star Wars. They don't even know. They don't even do the character if they played a live action version. Just say like Ezra or like Sabine, like stuff like that. They even say, "Oh yeah, I watched some episodes of Rebels, but I I wanted to go in like." But you really, and that's why I don't like. And I'm like, you really can't do that. Like no, you you have to do the the research. You have research. to see who they were and how they started and and where they came yeah, from. Yeah, like and when the, those interviews came out with those people, I'm like. And then when you watch the show, like, yeah. I don't know if you watch the Ahsoka series. I no. love Ahsoka. Don't get me wrong. I love Ahsoka. Rosario <laughs> Johnson does a great job. You know, she does a great job. But like the Sabine character, like if you watch what happened in Rebels 
and then you take that Tia, what Tia yeah. did with that character is phenomenal. And when you with what you do with Natasha, it's two different Sabines. Like you really, really? Don't, like you really don't see like it. I don't know. I could be wrong. A lot of people liked it, a lot of people didn't, but I didn't. I wasn't the one to like that. Ezra, they cast Ezra. Ezra was great. You know, Ezra was it looks like it looks like Ezra, old Ezra when he grows up. After yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, but Sabine, I really wanted like Tia to do it because I, I yeah. really wanted Tia to do the live action Sabine, and I I just didn't get that hope. Um, but I wonder yeah. if it, I wonder if it's also the director who might direct them differently. It's you know, um, or maybe the director be. said, "Don't watch the episodes. We want to create it fresh." Who who knows? Yeah. Who knows what goes behind the closed doors? Yeah. Um. But my next question to you, Julie, is. What, like, I know you did your research of Princess Leia, but what is your favorite line that she says? Like her favorite quote or her favorite, like her, I could say, you know what? I'll give it easier. Cause you might not maybe remember your favorite quote or something, but your favorite scene of Princess Leia, even if it was in the movies or even your scene with Ezra and Keenan, you interacted yeah. with Ezra and Keenan. Um, even that general, I don't know his name that you, it was in Rebels that you talked like so down to yeah that's uh, that's the one of my favorite lines is from rebels is um when i say to them uh keep keep your helmets on and keep and uh, uh put your helmet if you don't wait what was it he <laughs> said uh, ezra said something like what how can you talk to us or like this or something and i say um if you don't want to get recognized or if you don't want them to know who you are shut your helmets and keep your mouth shut how could she talk to us that way? So that was a fun line to do. Um, but I do like the the Obi-Wan Kenobi speech. Um, You're my only hope is one of my favorite lines. And in fact, that's what I write sometimes on my, when I sign autographs. Oh. They'll ask me to write a quote or I'll write me the force be with you. But I sometimes put you're my only hope. And I feel fun about it because I'm thinking, well, I didn't really say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fine. Um, sometimes they'll ask me to put, they'll tell me exactly what they want me to write from Rebels. So I'll write out that on the on the photo. But um, uh, I think I liked telling him to keep his mouth shut. That was one of my <laughs> That's the best line. Well, I'm glad you, I'm, I'm really so happy you did your research of Harry Fisher. What she brought to that character is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so my next question to you, Julie. So you watched all the movies. Do you have your favorite Star Wars movies? Uh, you know, I liked Rogue One. A lot of people did. A lot of people loved the Rogue One. I'll tell you why. Because it answered a question for me about how how did the Death Star have a flaw? You know, I just thought, well, that's convenient. The Death Star's got a flaw all of a sudden, and I, and now they can go blow it up. And this explained, it kind of did the flashback of how it did have the flaw. And that completed the story for me. So, and I liked the acting and I liked the actors. Now, so if you I, watch Endor, I don't know if you watched Endor. Endor is before Rogue One. I don't know if you watched Endor. No, but I'm in Endor right now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so wait, you're talking about Return of the Jedi? No. No. Uh, Endor, the series with Cassie oh, Endor. Oh, no, no. Why you watch that? I think you would like it. It's like I didn't finish it because I thought it was boring. I thought it was boring, um, but I I stopped like maybe episode nine. There, there are only two seasons. It's like casting Endor's whole like tr not trilogy, but it's it's whole like come together till Rogue One. So okay. you, oh. yeah, so you might like that because it goes into Rogue One. This has happened before Rogue One. Is it animation? No, it's live action. Are there a bunch of little uh, characters in it? No. Little... Okay. No, it's it's and it's Cassian. You remember Cassian from Rogue One? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he has a show. It's his own show. Okay. Well, maybe it's I will. His, yeah, it's his own show. It's, I think it's twelve episodes. Season two comes out. I think the end of this year or the beginning of next year. Season two. It's pretty good. It's like a James Bond. If you like, if you ever watch James <laughs> Bond, it's like kind of like that. Very like. Dun, 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 like on ice cubes and stuff like that, but it's good. It's a good show. Um, yeah. My next question to you, Julie, is for people out there that want to be voice actors, like myself, I I, I think I would do pretty good. 
Um, any advice to them that you, they're watching this and they want to get into voice acting? If they want to start, like, I'm 25. So what happens if I, if you're like, you're in your late 20s or you're early? Like, can you give any advice on those fellow voice actors that are trying to get a name out there? Well, the key word is acting. So I would say acting classes because you're going to be up against people like, you know, uh, uh, me or um, people from Rebels that, that have been actors for a hundred years. And then you, it's not about your voice, you know, cer certainly if you're doing voice matching, yeah. But it, there's also, what do you want to do? Do you want to do animation? Do you want to do commercials? Do you want to do audiobooks? Do you want to do um, e-learning or medical stuff? Or, you know what I mean? There's so many different avenues and there's classes on all of it. And you need to learn how to set up. Nowadays, everybody's doing stuff from home, you know, video games. Um, you need to have equipment. You have to have a good mic. You have to have a good sound booth. Um, when 2020 happened, voice actors scrambled because you, can't, you couldn't go in the studio. So you had to create your own studio at home if you still wanted to audition. So I would what I did was I was a voice, an on-camera actor since I was nine. And then wasn't that, I mean, I would say the last maybe 15 years, I've only been doing voiceover. <clears throat> and so what I did was I took a bunch of voiceover classes, which are basically acting classes behind the mic. And then I did a demo and then I sent it out to agents. And then I got a call from an agent. I signed with her and then I started booking commercials. And yeah, so it, there's just a process that you have to go through. And there's all these things online like Voices123 and Voices.com where you can sign up. You can, if you have, you can do, um, you have to put up some demos of your voice, but it, it, you get auditions through there, but you, you really don't want to audition until you're ready. Cause they're going to remember a bad audition. So oh, yeah, that's the biggest. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I will put now, do you have an acting class? Like I know a lot of voice actors have classes. Like, can we go online or you don't have that yet? No, I do not teach act uh, voiceovers, but a lot of voiceovers, you know, um, uh, from rebels, uh, Steve, Steve Lowe. Lowe. Yeah. Steve Lowe. He teaches an acting class. I mean, there's so many out there voiceover actors that are very successful that teach class that, uh, you know, they teach video games or they teach animation or they teach, you know, commercials. It all depends on what you want. Uh, promos. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, the people that announce the country music awards or <laughs> uh, movies in a world far away, you know, <laughs> so it all depends on what they want to do. They just need to kind of narrow it down at first and focus on that and what you really want to do and then you then you can go then they can guide you the force can guide you julie yeah force i focused you. on uh, animation and commercials only because i was already an actor and i was already doing commercials and i was doing tv and film so it, it seemed to fall naturally into doing animation and and commercials i wasn't interested in doing audiobooks you got to sit in your closet and read for six hours that is mm -mm, not going to do that <laughs> um and i didn't realize at the first when i first started i didn't realize there were so many different types of voiceover jobs there's medical you know you do things for um like medical teams where they are showing uh, a new technology on, on some machine to their employees and they have to have oh, a voice wow. for that there's so many different avenues that you there's can so do. many i didn't know that i didn't know they did that yeah <laughs> that's yeah. a lot and they hire voiceover actors for all that stuff yeah I, I i think animation is the one i would really love to do animation is like you take an acting class and take an animation class yeah because what they'll do is that there's teachers that will um give you copy of like a script uh, a character and they give you a drawing of that character so you kind of you know if it's a little chicken or if it's you know a, a duck and you look at it and you go what does this character sound like what do i think this character sounds like and you come up with your own voice and then you read the copy and then they critique you and they help you and oh, wow. make, and you get to watch other people because you're in a class but it's online you can do it on zoom and you get to watch 
how people transform. You see their first reading and you're like, yeah, they're not very good. And then the, the coach will get in there, the teacher will shift it and then they'll read it again and you'll see the difference. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah I'm definitely going to do that. I really want to do that. It's like going towards 2025 and start doing that. Cause I really, I think I really would enjoy it. Yeah. Even just taking classes is fun to do. Yeah. That. You have fun with other people, peers and everything. Yeah. Maybe Julie could be in one of my class and we could be besties, you know? <laughs> you never know. You could see me in a class. I still take class. You know, oh, really? Also, That's good. Yeah. You, you have to keep it up. You have to. You then you stop and then you're just eh, flat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You get rusty. Uh, so my last question to you, Julie, yes. is if Star Wars called you and you, would you come back as Princess Leia? Hell, heck yes. You can say hell, you can say it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm waiting for that call. I'm waiting for it too. <laughs> I'm waiting Hold for up. you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I really am. Yeah. And I think like you would come back and you would kill it. I really, I think Thanks. even if Princess Leia, I don't know if they maybe do Tales of uh, the Jedi. I know that's another animation that they're coming out later this year with. Um, yeah. Like but, maybe do a young Princess Leia, you know, yeah. which she went through and her journey into like episode seven, you know, where she where she is with Luke and Luke's on another planet and stuff like that, the Force right. of Right. Um, I would love to see you voice Princess Leia. Thank you. I would too. I, I see a lot of the projects that they're coming up with and I always kind of dive in and try to, find out if there's a Princess Leia and who it is and who got the, but I haven't seen any Princess Leia characters recently. Yeah, the recently, that's why I asked you if you ever did the Rise of Skywalker, but then I was like, Shelby, Shelby, I think did that one. I don't know if she was Leia, was she, was there Leia in that? Yes, it was, was the whole Shelby. saga. Oh, okay, that was probably Shelby, yeah. Yeah, cause I tried to see if it was you and I didn't see your name and I was like, oh, and then I saw Shelby and I was like, okay, she did play Princess Leia. She plays so many characters, Shelby. I lose yeah. track of how many characters she plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She does a um, lot of these voice looping and stuff and, and background characters. Yes. Um, but I would love to see you, Julie, back as Princess Thank Leia. Thank you. Thank you. You did a great job. Even in that you one episode, know. I, I really connected. I felt like what Carrie Fisher brought to the character and then you bring it to animation. And, and in reality, like the Lego stuff, you know, you really don't count as Star Wars, you count it, but oh, it's not yeah. part of like the saga. You know what I mean? It's not part of right. the saga. So in reality, you're the only Princess Leia in that time frame, like Rebels, that we've seen in our time. And from episode one through eight, no, was it nine? Yeah, Rise of Skywalker is the last one, I think nine. Um, yeah, so you're the only Princess Leia, except Carrie Fisher. You're Carrie Fisher's here and you're right here. Because all the Lego ones are the games and Battlefront. So, okay. we, really, so we really don't like have a storyline, if I could say that. You know, yeah. Like storyline. Okay. You, brought in, you were brought into a story and we told part of your story because in reality, we didn't know if Princess Leia knew any other Jedis out there. And we didn't know like if she knew other rebel cells. You know, we see her in New Hope, Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back. But we didn't see her interact with any other than Luke, Han, Chewie, stuff like that. So when you bring Princess Leia into Rebels, it makes perfect sense because she's a rebel and she's the leader of the Rebels. And she is a big rebel cell. And you see her, how she comes through with Kenan. And she can feel Ezra's sadness because she's a Jedi, you know? And Ezra even senses something with Leia, but she doesn't know yeah. what. Like, yeah. he doesn't know what. Yeah. And it's like, that's awesome because that's like i said that's the first ever we've seen in our timeline of the skywalker saga or not even the skywalker saga that we get princess leia instead of carrie fisher huh i didn't realize that um i i know that that rebels was right before it's sort of like sandwiched in between well it's right before a new hope so carrie or leia is maybe 15 ish in rebels and she's just starting out doing her own missions as yes. a rebel and kind of she's you know working for her father and she uh takes this chance on 
uh, you know, with, with the missiles and, and she makes a mistake, um, which costs, costs them some, causes them some issues, but it's, it feeds right into when she goes to do a new hope, she's 18 years old. Yes. And uh, you kind of, so I watched a new hope a lot to see where I was going and what I was becoming, but I'm, but I was still newbie at it. She was still, you know, not quite in her skin yet as a rebel. I mean, she, in her heart she was, but she hadn't done a lot. She was only 15, 15 yeah. or 16. Mm -hmm. And she didn't know what she was doing. She thought she was going to get these supplies. And, and then she goes, a Jedi. Like, oh my God, we see those these days? Because we all know that the Jedi are not around at that time, but Ezra and Keenan are. Um, and then it cuts into A New Hope. And then you understand why. Even, I think, if you watch the Kenobi series, you understand how Princess Leia still remembers Obi Wan. Yes. You know. You, yes. And that's and that's I like how that they connected that because you you remember that from a new um, from the Obi Wan series into the New Hope, and then yes. also even in Rebels, like you get some, you don't get a thing of Obi Wan, but still, like you could see she's still around in the timeline. She's still helping Rebels and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm watching the Obi Wan uh, series right now. It's good. It's slow, but it's good. Okay. It's slow, but it's good. I think I'm on episode six of. Uh, it's only one season, right? Yeah, it's a limited. So the, the last, I think the last episode, I think the last two episodes are like the best episodes of the series. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this episode six, it's it's really the fight scene with him and Vader is really good. Okay. I think you'll really like it. Um, <laughs> I think you really like it. Uh, yeah. But I have to ask you one more question. I really do. Yeah. Um, you're gonna meet little Princess Leia. I know. I'm so excited. Week. Like, how is that? Have you you haven't met her or talked to her or anything like no, that? No, I I uh, when I saw that we were going to be doing a photo op together, I screenshot it and put it on my Instagram, and I tagged her in it. And it, it when I tagged her, it made her um, a like a an associate, so she can also post it. And so now she's following me, and I'm following her. And so many people have seen that post. Uh, and I'm sure they're all from her her fans because she's got a gazillion fans. So <laughs> now we're aware of each other. Actually, it's probably her mom that's manning. The, that's doing it. Yeah, the parents. You know. So I think her mom went. Oh, okay, this is an actual actor who is in the Star Wars uh, universe and somebody that we're going to be hanging out with. So she's just uh, following me, and I'm following her. So I, I'm excited to meet her. I she's very lovely of what I could see on interviews and. Con. Oh, yeah. She's adorable. I haven't met her. I've met little Luke though. Grant. Grant is amazing. They have so much fun at the the, uh, the conventions. I really. Yeah. Okay. Think, good. Yeah. So I think you'll have fun with um, Grant and Vivian. I think they're both awesome. I haven't oh, met good. Vivian. I wish she would come around here. I was supposed to go to Rebel Scum Com in Texas, but it just didn't add up the time and stuff like that. I was like, maybe mm -hmm. next year I'll be there. I hope you're there next year. Uh, and I just want to thank you so much julie for oh me. thank you for having me it's been a blast i really do i really whatever now i gotta ask you one more i know you hate <laughs> one more well uh, what's what's coming up for you can you spill anything that you're coming up with i know if the star wars is related i know you can't say anything about that yeah uh, anything you can say or what people can look forward to on live action because i know you do a lot of uh live action also roles well, right right now uh, yeah Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, right now on Amazon Prime, you can see um, me in an episode of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Season 5, Episode 7. Um, <laughs> also, I have a couple of stuff on, a uh, couple of series on um, BET+. Plus. <laughs> and I'm just like one day here, one day there on, on different shows. But I have a, a recurring role on a new Season 2. It's not a new series. It's Season 2 of Reasonable Doubt, which is a, uh, it's on Hulu. Season one is airing now, which I'm not in. Season two starts August 22nd, and uh, I'm in seven out of ten episodes. And oh, wow. it's really cool, lawyer, female lawyer-driven crime drama series, courtroom drama series. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Now, when that, say that again, where will it be out? August, you said? August 22nd is when the first episode of season two of Reasonable Doubt uh, starts airing on Hulu. On Hulu. And we will stay tuned for that. I'll be watching that. I'll get a Hulu subscription just for you, Julie. Just for you. 
just for you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but Julie, thank you so much for coming on the Scavoli uh, Tano show. Um, I love you. That's really Aww, awesome. thank you. I love you too. <laughs> That's all much it. Like I said, you're my Princess Leia because, like I said, I really didn't grow up with that Carrie, the Carrie Fisher one. I love, don't get me wrong, I like Carrie Fisher, nothing to her. But, you know, like, you're my Princess Leia and I hope Aww. to see you soon um, at a con and more live action. Once I hear a voice of Princess Leia and they announce animation, I'm in, I'm texting you, Julie. Okay. I'm, I'll be like, girl, I see you. You didn't tell me this. You lied. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. lied to me. Um, <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on the show. And then I just want to ask you before we leave, your band, you're in a band. Can you tell us any gigs you'll be performing or you're local in your hometown? Or well, yeah. Um, I w When I was in LA, I, l I was born and raised in Los Angeles and I just left there two years ago. I was in like six bands and they were all cover and tribute bands. There was an all female um, classic rock kind of uh, band, Undercover Girls. And then I was in a Bon Jovi tribute and an In Excess oh, wow. tribute and a David Bowie tribute, all of these different bands. So here, I only have time for one band and we play mostly around Atlanta. But my all-girl band, the Undercover Girls, the classic rock band in LA, we keep getting hired. So we're gonna be in like San Francisco in September, and then we're gonna be in North Carolina next year. And <laughs> we were in Denver last year. <laughs> so it's just crazy. But it, you know, I, I'm a keyboard player, and I've been playing piano since I was a kid. So it just turned into about 20 years ago, a job where I'm in a band, I book the bands, I I do a lot of the organization of it, and uh, I don't book them here. I've joined a band here, and I was like, I, I don't need to do anything except play keyboards <laughs> and sing. So um, it's backup. I sing backup. Let's get that straight. I don't <laughs> sing. Um, but I'm having a blast here doing that, and it's keeping me busy. We gig almost every other weekend. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. You got to come to Jersey, Julie, so I can see you. <laughs> okay. I played in Atlantic City with the Undercover Girls. Oh, that's really? A long time ago. Mm -hmm. it was oh, if you ever come back, if you bring this fan or the un Undercover Girls, let me know. I'll be there. Okay. And like, Julie, I'll hold up a sign. I'll say, I know Princess Leia. Oh, my I God. That would be hysterical. <laughs> I, I felt like Atlantic City was like Las Vegas on the ocean. It <laughs> 2. was 2.0. So <laughs> Huh? 2.0. 2.0. Yes. 2 .0. <laughs> um, but Julie, again, I just have to thank you so much for taking You're the welcome. time and coming to talk to me about Princess Leia, other things, and more, always Star Wars. Like I said, I hope to see you again as Princess Leia. I loved you as Princess Leia. And um, now I know when I go to Star Wars tours, your voice is there. I'll look for it. I yeah. Didn't it. Yeah. I didn't realize it. Yeah, it's all over Dis at Disneyland in LA and in Florida and in um, the English version, you know, in Japan and Paris. It's all it's it, when they do get the English version, it's my voice. Um, but it's definitely it's going to outlive me. That's for sure. <laughs> It'll be living on for years. Yeah, It'll be living on for years. All right, go, um, take, a, go take a shower. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, but before we go, where can everybody find you on the social medias? Where can everybody connect with you? I will also put the links down to Julie oh, okay. so you guys can go follow her, support her, and oh. everything else. So where can they can find you? Uh, Instagram is uh, Julie M, as in Marie, my middle name, Julie M Dolan, and Facebook is uh, uh, Julie Dolan Actress. I think it is. And I used to be on Twitter, just call me Leia, but I don't really go there anymore. Like X. No, it's called X now. X now. Yeah, but uh, and Instagram has a new little like offshoot as yeah, well. Yeah, I think it's called Trends. 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 Yeah, well, like I guess I'm on that too, but I never signed up for it. It just sort of happened. So <laughs> Instagram and Facebook, I'm on you know every day. So I got. I think I. I think I'm a friend on Facebook. I gotta check. No, I think I'm friends with you. You have to go to Julie Dolan Actress and then and follow me on that. Oh, okay, okay. I think I we're think... Co we're connected on Instagram though. I think we are. We are. I think. Yeah, yes, yeah. we are. I saw uh, my head. I don't know my head from my elbow, Julie. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but thank you again. And guys, Princess Leia just told me to take a shower. So just so you guys know, she told me that. But this is going down live when this <laughs> comes out. Don't worry. Uh, but before we go, Julie, can you? 
Say a quote by Princess Leia in her voice, if you can. Uh, well, like I told you before, I have to listen to the voice. And uh. I have to, but <laughs> let me see if I can do, um, uh, I'll just try something. <clears throat> General Kenobi. Years ago, you served my father in the Clone Wars, and now he begs you to help him in his struggle against the Empire. I regret that I'm unable to present my father's request to you in person, but my ship has fallen under attack, and I'm afraid my mission to bring you to Alderaan has failed. I've placed information vital to the survival of the Rebellion into the memory systems of this R2 unit. My father will know how to, my father will know how to retrieve it. You must see this droid safely delivered to him on Alderaan. This is our most desperate hour. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. I cried a little, Julie. Julie, I cried. <laughs> I cried a little. I'm tearing it, up, girl. I'm tearing it's hard up. to pull it out of my butt just like that. It like, is, but you did great. You did great. Oh. I'm like, I'm just going to keep that little one. Like, I'm just going to keep that little reel of you. And then I'm just going to save it to my camera roll and play it. And be like, yeah. hey, guys, I know her. I know her. <laughs> um, but Julie, thank you again. Thank you, everybody, for watching on the Scavoli Tunnel. Thank you. Uh, guys, be kind to one another. Make sure you guys subscribe down below to the YouTube channel, the Scavoli Tano Show. Uh, Julie, you're welcome back on my show anytime to talk Star Wars. I would love to have Princess Leia on the show again. Um, <laughs> but thank you guys for watching. Right. Be kind to one another, and may the force be with you, my friends. Oh. May the force be with you. In my life, when you find people who need your help, you help them, no matter what.